We discussed how transistors can take the form of discrete components like this, but we can also fabricate whole circuits onto a single chip where numerous different components, including transistors, are integrated into one device. An example of such a device is the operational amplifier, also known as the op-amp. These are one of the most widely used electronic devices, and they're used for all sorts of things like uh, audio preamplification, waveform generation, uh, voltage and current regulation, and filtering. And they're used in all sorts of applications, for example, strain gauges to measure deformation in structures, like, like bridges or buildings, for example, um, temperature measurement circuitry, and control circuits for aircraft or other production operations. This is what an op-amp looks like, and in this diagram, you can see the internal transistor level circuitry. It looks horrendously complicated, but despite this, we can actually treat op amps as simple three terminal devices with two inputs and one output. As its name suggests, an op amp is fundamentally a DC voltage amplifying device. A very small voltage difference at its two inputs can control a large output voltage, and you can control this amplification by manipulating the feedback components, which you can connect between its output and input terminals. Let's take a closer look at how they can be used. This diagram shows you the pin layout of an op amp. You can see here, the op-amp requires power, so you've got two uh, power terminals here at pin 7 and pin 4. You need to supply it with a voltage, and in our practical, we use plus or minus 15 volts to do this. You also have two input terminals, that's pins 2 and pins 3, so you have an inverting input and a non-inverting input, and then you have one output pin here at pin 6. The other three pins you don't need to worry about. In this configuration, which we call open loop, the voltage out depends upon the difference between the two input signals. And you can see here that V out is equal to A, which is known as the gain, and in this case, the open loop gain, multiplied by the difference between the two input terminals, the difference between the voltage there. In an ideal op amp, the resistance between the two input terminals is infinite. So you don't get any current flowing between the two. They draw no current. Whereas the resistance out is zero. So all of the current comes out of the op amp. The gain in this uh, open loop situation is infinite. So it's uncontrolled. We don't have any control. We can't change the gain. Uh, and it's determined by the supply voltage and yeah, you get a few losses because of the in internal resistance in, in the system itself, but the, the gain is essentially infinite. You also have an infinite bandwidth, which means that all the frequencies that are applied as signal in uh, can, will be amplified at the same gain. This means that you can essentially use op amps as comparators. Uh, what's a comparator? Well, essentially you're comparing the two input voltages and you're producing a signal that's dependent on those. So you can see here, the idea is you, you would have a very tiny input signal and you would get a large output. If V plus, so if the non-inverting signal is greater than V minus, the inverting signal, then you would get the highest possible voltage. When V plus is smaller than V minus, then you would get the most negative voltage. So in our case, in the practical, you would get either plus 15 or minus 15 volts. Because you're comparing two inputs and you're essentially only getting two possible states out, either plus 15 or minus 15, you get a binary output in this case. So essentially what you're doing is you're getting an analog signal and you're getting a digital signal out. So this is just one method of converting analog to, to digital. However, op amps aren't ideal for this situation, for, for use as comparators, for two reasons. First is that once the, uh, the uh, V out signal, so once the output has become saturated, that means it's gone to uh, one of its extreme values, either plus or minus 15 volts, it takes time for it to recover from that. So you can see when you do uh, experiments on these in the lab and you hook up your oscilloscope, you can see that there's some lag, so uh, basically a delay in its reaction time. 
And we call this, we can measure this as the slew rate. So that's the change in voltage over the change in time. The other problem with op amps is that they can be severely affected by noise. So if there's noise around zero volts in this case that you can see on this sketch, or if the noise means that it's very difficult for it to tell the difference between the two inputs, then the output signal will jump around as a, as a consequence of that noise. There is something we can do about that, and uh, basically we can build a circuit which we call a Schmidt trigger, uh, but I'm not going to cover that in this particular course. So if we want to use op amps in order to control the gain, so we want to control the, the amount of amplification that we're getting in Vout, we have to look at two different types of uh, amplification, non-inverting and inverting. In a non-inverting amplifier configuration, we apply our input signal here, V in, and in this case, it's an alternating signal, V in, is going into our non-inverting pin of our op amp. In order to control the gain, we need to add resistors between the V out, so the output voltage, and the other pin. So essentially, you have two resistors here in series, so it's acting like a voltage divider. And it's the relationship between these two resistors here which controls the gain or the amplification coming out. So there are a few things that you need to remember. So no current flows between V plus and V minus. So this is V plus here, V minus. So between these two pins, no current flows. And that means that all of the current that is flowing, we'll just call it I, will go through the op amp and it'll come to V out. It'll also then continue to flow through this voltage divider. It won't flow through here back because it doesn't flow, it's infinite resistance, so it doesn't flow through there. So the current flows back here and through to ground. So that's one thing that you need to remember. Then also in op amps, feedback always drives V plus to be equal to V minus. So this is something that is true for both inverting and non-inverting amplifiers, so you need to know that. And of course you need to remember what Ohm's law is. V equals IR. So in order to calculate what the gain is, don't forget that gain is equal to V out over V in, so that's the difference between my output signal and my input signal. So in order to calculate that, we need to look at what's going on in this situation. So first I'm going to look at what is V in. Well, V in comes into my V plus pin here. So that's equal to V plus, they're one and the same. This is coming into this terminal here of the op amp. Well, we know that feedback drives V plus to equal V minus, so this is also equal to V minus here. Let's now look at an expression for V out. V out, this is coming out here. This voltage is dropped because the current flows through our voltage divider. This current it flows this way through R2 and R1. So the voltage is dropped first across R2 and then is dropped across R1 where it reaches zero volts because this is connected to ground. So V out will be equal to I R2 because it goes through R2 add I R1 because it goes through R1 and I'm just implementing Ohm's law. Now, I still don't have an expression for V in in relation to these resistors here. So that's the next step. So V in we know is equal to V plus and feedback drives V plus to be equal to V minus. So we can work out what the voltage here is because that's going to be the same as V out minus what it's lost over here, which is IR2, but that's also going to be the same as what we have here is V minus is going to be, so V minus because V in is equal to V plus, which is equal to V minus, and V minus is going to be equal to zero plus IR1. And this expression here, V in is equal to IR1, 
will now allow us, well, either of these expressions will allow us to solve this because we have two equations uh, that we can solve. So now V out I know is equal to I R2 and R1. I'll just write them in this order because it's uh, a bit neater. And over V in, and we know that V in, you can use either of these two expressions, but I'm going to use this one here because it just makes the steps easier. So here we end up with this expression and we can now cancel the i's because the current is the same throughout. So we end up with V out over V in is equal to R1 over R1. Add R2 over R1, which is equal to 1 add R2 over R1. So you can now see how the gain A can be manipulated or controlled by controlling the, the relationship between these two resistors here. In my inverting amplifier configuration, I now have my signal V in, which is still my AC signal here. This is connected to the inverting pin of my op amp. But my voltage divider is still connected to that side of the op amp. So here you can see I've now grounded my uh, V plus. So this is V plus. So uh, this is at zero volts. And my V in comes here and my V out is there. Again, the same rules apply. So no current flows between these two pins. The resistance is infinite. Uh, I need to know Ohm's law, V equals IR. And I need to know that feedback drives V plus to be equal to V minus. So if you want an expression for the gain, we first have to look at, can we get an expression for V out? Well, V out here is dropped across the, this resistor R2 and then it's dropped across resistor R1 because the current flows this way. And it'll be dropped across here and here and it'll become equal at this point to V in. So actually V out minus V in is going to be equal, and now implementing Ohm's law, I R2 add I R1 because this is the equivalent of the voltage that is dropped between V out and V in. So this is one expression that's useful to us. Now the other expression that we need to know, well we need to get an expression for V in. Now let's see, the other expression that we can get if we look at what happens between V in and this inverting pin here, well we know from uh, feedback drives V plus to be equal to V minus. V plus in this case is grounded, so that's equal to zero volts here in this case. So that means here is equal to zero volts. So what we have here between these two, I have minus, so V minus here, minus V in, that's the voltage that's dropped across this resistor here, which is equal to IR1. We know that V minus is equal to zero. So V in is actually equal to minus I R1. So now if you want to know the gain, that's equal to V out over V in. So we can take these, these expressions here. So this one and this one. And if I do 1 divided by 2, I get V out minus V in over V in on one side. And on this side, I get I R2 add I R1 divided by minus I R1, where I can now cancel through my I's. And here I would end up with V out over V in, which is my gain minus these two cancel, so I end up with minus one. And here I end up with R2 add R1 over R1, and this is all negative. And if I rearrange, I end up with an expression where I can now cancel these two. So I end up with 1 minus R2 over R1 minus 1. So I end up with R2 divided by R1. And this is my expression for gain for an inverting op amp.
Of course, you need to be careful what this diagram looks like because actually sometimes it's possible for, for the diagram to be drawn the other way with a V negative drawn on the top and V positive on the bottom. So just be careful that you're not thrown by the layout of these circuits.